Last week, we started off with a very simple tail wagging and leg stomping animation for the Stegosaurus character. And then this week, we'll take that and add some more improvements to the animation and make the motions look more natural. Basic concept number 5C, animation workflow. This stomping effect doesn't really look realistic. The, realistically speaking, the hind knees, the hind, the knees of the hind legs should be bending a bit to support the weight of the dinosaur as he's lifting himself upward because the center of mass is changing. So he needs to, the hind legs needs to bend just a bit. And what am I going to do is I'm going to add an IK control for the knees of the back legs as well. And it's going to be the same way as we did for the front legs because I don't want to animate the left knee and then animate the right knee. I only want to animate one of the knees and have the other one follow. Just um, the same trick that we did with the front legs. So let's copy this or entire block and let's copy it over. And we're just going to change things in here. So this is going to be back. Let's come over here, select this blast node. And we're going to update this with the correct bone. So we want the right knee, which should be this guy over here. Click this, enter to add it in. Select the next blast node. And I want to update this. Select the left knee. That, okay. Now, all of this has to be hooked up to the IK control. So let's select these two rig pose nodes that are connected to the knees and connect them both to the merge. So everything goes into the full body IK. Now you're going to see warnings here for these rig pose nodes. That's because I'm reusing the rig pose node and the names don't match. What it's saying is it doesn't exist because over here in these blast nodes, I'm isolating the back knees, but the rig pose nodes here are moving or manipulating or posing the front feet, which was left off from whatever I copied over. So what we need to do is we need to reset these rig pose nodes and reselect the correct IK. Hit that clear button so we can start fresh and then come over to the viewport over here, press enter and let's reselect this knee and it'll automatically create an entry for the pose. Okay, let's do the same thing to the other rig pose node that's connected to the back left knee it's like this hit clear and come over here and select in the viewport over here and it'll automatically fill in the correct value now we're going to need to do the same trick as what we did before left knee copy the right knee so we only have to animate um, the right knee and the left knee will follow so let's select the rig pose node right click the translate copy parameter come over to the other rig pose node right click the translate paste relative references again the other rig pose node right click the rotations this time copy parameter come over here to the rig pose the other rig pose node right click rotations paste relative references let's test this now okay let's go to our driving knee which is this guy let's select this and let's well let's adjust the time frame to when the feet are lifting up to frame 24 and then let's see what we can do with the knee okay so we can see indeed both knees are actually bending and they're following that's perfect now we can start keyframing the, the back knees let's go to frame zero uh frame one so this should be in the default position and the rotations will be zero that's where i want this and let's create a keyframe here now let's go to frame 24 and that's where the both the front feet are lifting up at its highest point. That's where we want the knees to bend a bit. So let's bend it for just a bit. Let's take a look what this looks like. And I actually want to move it down a bit if we can. Looks okay. Okay, I think that... Let's create a, a keyframe for the translation and rotation on frame 24. So on frame 36, that's when the feet land. So I want to zero this out again because I want everything in the default position. And let's create a keyframe here. Okay, let's see what how this looks like. Now for better organization, I actually want the back feet to be on its own step, on its own layering full body IK step, just to be more organized. Now let's bring this down here. So I want this to be on its own step. So let's gonna bring this down here and let's disconnect everything that's going in and out of the back legs. So Y on the keyboard and you'll get this little scissors and you can actually cut these lines by left clicking and drag uh, whatever you wanna cut. This is super handy. Now let's 
drag this down and let's throw throw down a full body eye cane node let's connect this through and remember to switch this over because you this is super important if uh since we're reusing the original skeleton and bones as our iks so match by attribute name okay let's connect the rest of this so this um, needs to be connected to the our IKs and this the IK controls merge it together because they all have to go into the the source of the full body IK so the full body IK needs to know about the IK controls better organization so it's the same routine it's the same setup or same format as what we did here here and now we're doing it here okay now we got everything going all over the place that's because we don't have the same anchor points anymore we had anchor points here we don't have those anchor points here yet and what we need to do is copy the anchor points over so let's drop this over here and let's hook this up to the rest of this connect it to the merge and let's see how this goes okay that looks pretty good now there's another thing i need to anchor down is the tail you can see here the tail is actually going to move when he's lifting the front feet up the tail goes down so we don't want the tail to go down as well we need to add an anchor point to this stage over here to ensure that it follows the tail wag animation from the first step let's add um, an anchor point to the tail on for the second step over here and that's where the stomping animation comes in so we want it here rather than the last step because the anchor point over here will inherit the previous ik layers we want it to inherit the tail wagging because that's what the tail wagging is the animation that we're aiming for so let's play this let's go back to perspective mode let me just connect this the second layering or the second step to the joint to form and then we're just going to ignore this just for a second we can actually move it to the side we're just going to focus on this on the stomping animation uh, let me put the render flag on the joint to form node we want to anchor this down so let's come over to the anchor points and i'm going to add the tail in here let's add this let's enter i think i accidentally rubbed out everything else so you can see that i'm missing a lot of points over here i've lost my hind leg anchor points so let's undo that so that was a mistake on my end come back to that blast node again click this arrow once again feet here selected they're in yellow we don't want to lose that on the keyboard press shift press down shift and then click one of the points on the tail that we want to anchor down as well so we want to anchor let's say this one okay now they're all selected press enter let's play this back okay now the tail stays relatively in position this is perfect this is exactly what i want okay let's bring back the hind legs the next thing i want to do is have the neck bend down just a bit because he looks like he looks like a robot right now <laughs> So what I want to do is create another step for this. Let's drag this down. Now in the blast node, let's choose the neck position. So delete non-selected points and we're going to choose a neck. We're going to choose actually the head. So this point right here. And I'm going to connect that, our IK control into the full body IK. And remember in the full body IK, we need to update the mapping. So this is a new full body IK. Uh, map by attribute name okay let's attach a rig pose node to manipulate let's enter and let's select this okay let's see what this is doing okay so right here zero zero position perfect let's i always want the first frame to be in the the resting position so let's move the timeline all the way to frame 24 that's when he raises up the feet and i want the neck to sort of bend forward a bit but now look, it's moving the entire skeleton because we don't have any anchor points. So let's copy down the previous anchor points. We can use that. Let's connect this to the previous full body K. Let's make this a little bit more clean. Okay, so it's dampering down the feet though. As you can see, it's not going up quite as far anymore. But let's live with this for now because I want to finish the animation first and then we can tweak it um, anytime later on since this is very procedural. So let's take go to the neck. 
Let's go to frame 24 and let's make him look down a bit. That's perfect. And then put a keyframe here for the neck. And let's we go to frame 36. That's when he lowers down his front feet and completes the stop. We want to zero this out once again. Okay, let's see how that looks like. So his neck still looks a bit robotic, and that's going to be fixed a little later when I introduce the secondary motion node. Go back to perspective mode, and let's see what this looks like here. So now there's something I want to tweak. So we can always go back and tweak the front legs again, since this is very modular. So I feel like his stomp isn't going high enough. His front feet aren't going raising up high enough. Let's go back to frame 24 and raise it a bit higher. Let's play it. Now I feel like the hind legs aren't bending enough either. So let's go back to the knees, the driver knees here, and let's go to a frame 24 and let's bend it a bit more. And I feel like when you're bending it, the entire body sort of bends forward. So look at this. He, he's going, the knees are doing too much. They're, the knees are having too much influence, which tells me I need more anchor points. So let's put another anchor point on the root, on the belly of the dinosaur. Now let's come over here to the anchor points, and I want to add the root to be another anchor point. So shift, keyboard, and then select the root, then press enter. Okay, the knees look a lot better instantly. And we didn't even have to add a priority too. This is looking a lot better, except for the neck. It's being a little robotic. It's like it's sticking out and going back down. So what we can do now is out of at the very end step, let's add a secondary motion. And this note is very awesome. So it is the secondary motion note is a kin effects note, and it works for the skeleton of the kin effects. Let's take a look at the first two parameters on the secondary motion note. The joint group is the bone joint that you're trying to fix or make changes to. This secondary motion node adds lagging and overshooting effects to that specified joint mode. But these effects need another bone to help drive the animation in order to bring some sort of coherent motion to the whole animation. The whole animation needs to look like it's a whole. In order to achieve that coherency, there's a driver group that you can select to drive the joint group bones using the animation itself to create additional overshooting and lagging effects creates very cohesive results making the animation look more natural. Let's connect the inputs into the secondary motion. So all we really need is the first input. The second input is for motion clips. We don't need that for this example yet. For more complex 3D animations, you may require this node, uh, this input, the second input. For this particular one, we don't need it. The first output here would be the resulting skeleton, and that goes into the joint to form. Go to the joint group, click this, and it actually brings up this rig tree over here. So you can select it based on this hierarchy, which I find very complex. I'd rather just go to the viewport and just select my bone, the bone that I want to manipulate, which is the head, which is this one right here. Select that and press enter. Now, it <laughs> this might scare you. Don't worry. It's because we don't have a driver selected right here. So let's come over here and select the driver and the head will pop back up. I'm going to choose the root, the belly, to be the driver joint. And what this does is that the head will follow the root. The root doesn't do much. So that's actually perfect because we want the head to sort of like damper it a bit so that it looks a bit more natural because right now it looks very um, robotic. So let's choose the joint. And I'm going to choose the root. It has a very subtle animation. So it's perfect to drive the head and that's what I want for the head a subtle animation I don't want a robotic rotation motion so let's see what this looks like okay instantly that looks a lot better so without it let's ignore the secondary motion it looks a bit bouncy the, the neck looks a bit bouncy now with the secondary motion 
it wiggles a bit when it lands. So there's a bit of lag and overshoot there. What we can do is increase this to one to really show what it's doing. That's a bit much in my opinion because the neck coming down is starting to go back up again. It, it's flopping a little too much. So I don't, that's not something I would like. Maybe point, maybe point four. Yeah, that looks pretty good. This completes this example with a simple dinosaur stomping animation. I hope you find some of these tips demonstrated in this video helpful. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.